we're going to explain why data and phone services in the US are so expensive compared to the rest of the world. Yeah, they're costly in case you didn't know that or live elsewhere. In the US, the average price per one gig of data is $12.37. But in Sweden, a country widely known as expensive, the average price is $3.66. In Australia, $2.47. In Italy, is seven times lower than the US, only $1.73. And in Israel is $0.93, almost as cheap as India. Not for nothing, it's the country with the most tech startups per capita in the world. But why? Let me explain that to you. Then subscribe, or you can subscribe right now and then watch. First, companies, composition, and antitrust laws in the US. The enforcement of laws made to protect consumers and guarantee fair competition in an open market economy is less strict than the rest of the world. For that reason, companies are more used to buying each other out or merging them to become bigger. Size brings money and money brings power to raise prices, set wages to employees and influence the government. Telecommunication companies are involved in that and also in other services. AT&T, for example, buying Time Warner in 2018 and DirecTV in 2015. T-Mobile and Sprint, the third and fourth biggest wireless communications providers in the US, are in the middle of a merging process. If the merging happens, the new company will be covering a market of 133.5 million subscribers. And Verizon, the second biggest monster of the market, has a section of their website only to inform about the mergers and acquisitions they're doing around the world. All that has driven the market in the US to be mostly covered by four companies. That's a small number for one of the world's biggest markets. The UK, for example, has eight major telecommunications providers, being a much smaller market. For the second factor, we have to check in the bill. Where does the money you pay go? Well, there are a bunch of operation cost companies need to cover. First, to spectrum licenses. That is the electromagnetic area where the radio waves go through. And this means lifeblood for tech companies to work. And getting access to it is tricky and expensive. The US government sells the spectrum by chunks, using an auction system to sell permissions to use pieces of the spectrum to the companies. The rights to use the spectrum have an expiration date, and they can be traded between companies, creating another reason for companies to acquire one another. In 2017, for example, Verizon bought a company called Straight Path because it owned high-frequency radio waves, useful for the upcoming 5G network. The spectrum is so valuable that in 2007, T-Mobile paid $8 billion for a 45% of the low-band spectrum, and bought more of that from Verizon for around $3 billion in 2014. Companies like Google have participated in these auctions. After the spectrum issue, the infrastructure issue comes in. Companies spend millions of dollars in building and updating their equipment all over the country, which is not immune to obsolescence, same as the rest of the tech industry. And for that reason, an equipment upgrading can end up in an infrastructure replacement for everything, like in the case of the equipment needed for the upcoming 5G technology. In the case of cell phone towers, crucial to providing cell phone services, phone care companies opt for lease or sell the operation to specialized companies for them to focus on their primary goal, which is an excellent customer service. T-Mobile and AT&T lease their towers operations from a company called Crown Castle, and Verizon rents more than 11,000 towers to American Towers for $258 million per year. T-Mobile reported in 2016 that this cost, along with transportation costs, roaming fees paid to other providers, long distance costs, customer service, and more, ended up in a bill of $5.7 billion to, to cover the company's operating costs. Also, AT&T has reported costs of $361 million from devices that they were not allowed to sell and are obsolete now, so they lost their projected revenue. Of course, they want to recover the investment in those devices. And then taxes. In the US, Tax rates have increased by 4% in the past 11 years, but in the phone carrier industry, the growth has been 27%. In 2018, wireless consumers paid $16.1 billion in taxes, and the growth doesn't seem to stop. California regulators proposed a fee for any text message sent with the goal to get $44 million a year from that. Illinois state charges the most significant cell phone taxes with a 20.91%, while Oregon has the lowest with just 2.1%. Most of those taxes go to 911 services and to fund telecommunication services in schools, libraries, and hospitals. It is interesting to realize that phone plan prices have been going down in the past few years, actually down by 23%. That hasn't decreased more, mostly because of taxes. For that reason, big companies have been using their influence in the government to decrease them. Verizon, for example, got a 7.3 billion tax subsidy from 2008 to 2012. 
By the way, they take advantage of that influence to sell their services to the government as well. Verizon got $6 billion in revenue from long-term federal contracts. Phone service companies have also influenced to establish fiber optic cables as common carriers, gaining the same status as services like gas, power, or water. So the price to access them is federally controlled. That means that makes running new fiber optic cables much more cost effective. As you can see, it won't be easy for companies to cut costs or make bills cheaper. The spectrum fee will remain high. The land required to place towers will always grow in price, and it is impossible to generate more. The development of the smartphone industry, the constant equipment upgrading will be boosting the operation costs. For that reason, we don't expect a significant change in our bills soon. At least until new technology arrives, like telepathy or something like that. The only real option is new competition. A new company has the muscle to compete against the big four of the industry, like the case of Google Fi, a phone carrier service developed by Google, for which we made a video, of course. So feel free to check it out. We are just getting this channel started, but we're having a lot of fun and intend to continue making more videos. Your support supports it. A comment or a like goes a long way, and even more, a subscription. It's so free and so easy to click that red button, so why don't you do it? Come on, do it. Done, right? Okay, that's okay. See you next time. Stay fresh.